Hello and welcome back to Combat Corner number 26. My name is Jackson. My name's Kobe. And today we are breaking down the UFC fight night that is happening tomorrow, which seems to be uh, a little little bit more dead than the last fight night we had in terms of names. Um, it's an average one. Yeah. But, you know, the average ones often turn out to be the best. In terms of, uh, yeah, fiery performances and whatnot, but... Yeah, we'll we'll see how that that pans out. Um, we will. There's also a little bit of stuff we want to talk about with UFC 300 once again. Um, some other people in the uh, in the news too. We've got a brain drink uh, to to break down today. I think this would probably be a, a New Zealand special. This one, um, based on the name of it. But I believe that this is only in New Zealand currently. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of just a different way of saying what I said, but. Uh, on that note, I think we should crack right, into the then. episode. Right. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Combat Corner. Oh, it's a bit fizzy. A little bit. Frothing up. Uh, Arupa. The brain drink for calm and clarity, designed and tested by neuroscientists, hundred percent natural caffeine free. What does that mean? It's got unnatural caffeine in it. Light and Where sparkling black current uh, on the front of the bottle. One hundred percent natural caffeine free. Ah, oh, right. So yeah, no natural caffeine. No natural caffeine. Only, Only unnatural caffeine. The fake shit. Uh, but in all seriousness, this drink is caffeine free. Got 250 mg of L theanine, uh, which is found in tea. Uh, and it's apparently it's good for mental clarity and also calmness. Enzogenol, vitamin C. Uh, and we cop this for $6, but they're usually like $8. <laughs> Great minds drink alike. When you're calmer, clearer, faster, and happier, you're more productive. Our clinically researched natural ingredients. Help support neurological function and cognitive performance. Damn straight. This is what I've been saying. This is the drink for everyone with a brain. So everyone. That's good. It's good marketing. Um, I think this is it's it was developed as like a, a an alternate drink to caffeinated beverages that, you know. Uh for rich people. For rich people who can afford eight dollars per bottle, which is pretty fucking insane. Eight dollars per three hundred mils. Or you could just get some caffeine-free tea that has the same ingredients in it. But people aren't that smart and people fall for marketing such as this. Uh, bet you there's 10 of these in every fridge in fucking Fendleton and Merivale. Yeah. Along with like the... the uh, oh no, I'm feeling rather slow yeah. this morning. I haven't had Why my have Reaper. Reaper? <laughs> I've stopped drinking caffeine, love. Yeah. Fucking cunt. <laughs> um, anyway... <laughs> So that's the drink today. We will let you know how that goes later on. Um, but yeah, how are you doing today, Jackson? How are you feeling? Uh, great. Get a bit up close and personal <laughs> with the fan base, eh? No. I think we, we, uh, we hit 140 subscribers recently. Yeah. So thank and you for that. 35,000 views. Yeah, 30, 35 million views, which is pretty insane. That's huge. 35 mil. So I'm just going to actually double check that. I just want to um, confirm. So that we can thank you all for your support. I don't even know if anyone watches the actual podcast. You just, yeah, 140. Subscribed so, for the shorts. Yeah, our quality shorts, wow. mate. Um, oh, we, we got a comment on this video. Let's see. Bet it was it, was. it was. It was. He's, he's always always firing in. Ah, okay. Interesting. None of, the, yeah. Quite a, well, quite a few was, good fights on there, to be honest. Absolutely. Oh, Forrest Griffin. See, this is, this is where it, cha- this is like, He's much more, he's got a much more uh, mature view legacy. of the sport. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> legacy view. We're just looking at like fucking, oh, it's the Adesanya and his coloured hair. We're like those guys. No, we're not. But anyway, th- yeah, thank you guys for your support before we get into the show. Uh, we do have a UFC fight night this weekend and it's got a really big main card. Does it? Yeah. Um, sorry if my mouse would work. I'll, I'll share the screen with you guys. So headlining the card, we've got Jack Comanson versus Joe Pfeiffer. Uh, as you pointed out, this is Joe Pfeiffer's, what, third or fourth fight in the UFC? Yep. Uh, and he's been handed a main, of, main event slot. Uh, a lot of people calling Joe Pfeiffer one of the future uh, contenders in this division. 
I like that. Um, him and the likes of Bo Nickel um, as the the up and coming contenders. Jack Manson, obviously a bit of a veteran in this division. Uh, we've got Andre Philly, Dan I, good fight the featherweight division there. Two guys that are maybe trying to get back into contendership eventually. Mm. Um, we've got Robert Ryshek versus Ihor Porturia. I swear they just put the name, the weird name people together. Yeah. Don't really know who these guys are. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie. Okay. But we'll look into them later. We will. Brad Travares is back against Gregory Rodriguez. Brad, the uh, the gatekeeper Travares, is fighting Rodriguez. Interesting. Always fun fights when he's fighting. Uh, Michael Johnson versus Darius Flowers. Um, another one for Johnson, probably to get knocked out in. Uh Rodolov Vieira versus Armin Petrosian. Petrosian's interesting, very interesting. Both have the same record. Well, um, they won't after this they weekend. They won't after this, unless they get a draw. Or a no contest. Or a no contest. And then, so yeah, there's six six fights on that main card, which is more than usual. It's usually around, what, four or five? Um, it's normally about not many six, more. I think. Oh my God. It goes deep. What the fuck? Why are there so many fights on this card? I suppose they don't have early prelims, but... That's right. Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the prelims. Two, and three, six. four, five, six, seven, six. So there's 14 fights in total. Let's Quite compare few, that to the, like of, uh, the likes of 298. So five on the main card. Let's just, first of all, let's just talk about this. This is an amazing card. Five on the, the main, four on the pre's. Then three on the so that's thirteen. So I guess it's not that. What am I talking about, mate? What am I fucking on about? I don't know. Anyway, starting from the top, uh, Jack Manson versus Joe Pfeiffer. Jack Manson plays this uh, main event of the fight nights quite well, doesn't he? He does. Um, it's not as it's not his first rodeo, uh, as Winston Peters would say. Um, but Winnie P. When he pee, when he blues, um, look, yeah, he d- he does play this play this quite well. He, he is a bit of a, a gatekeeper himself um, yes, yeah. of of people that want to kind of make it through to that <clears throat> like that next kind of contender fight, if you like. Um, he's Joe, a good test. He is a good test, guys. and I think he's a great test for Joe Pfeiffer because we haven't really seen him up against that top quality of no, opponent yet. Not yet. Um, he obviously, he, um, TKO'd Mershartz, which is, I mean, that's impressive. Mershartz has got good jujitsu, but, um, you know, we've seen the likes of Hamzat put him out with one punch. This guy's obviously got power, uh, big power, big power. We'll get into that later. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, he did, he did get one loss recently on, well, not recently, but 2020 on the contender series, but he broke his arm. Right. Trying to defend a takedown, and I that see. was the end. So he was he was winning that fight. Um, probably would have got the win if it weren't for this injury. But yep. he's come back, and and he's looked nothing short of spectacular. Yeah, he's had a finish in every in every fight. Yeah, since then he's not left the second round in in every fight since then. So yeah, very impressive. Who's this guy? His last victory was against this man, Judo Thunder. But I mean, is that a real big win? Abdul Razak. Uh, Razak Al Hassan, mm. who yeah is twelve and six, is thirty eight years of age. Yeah, not not the best win there, but he's got a hundred percent finish rate when he wins though. Oh well, I think twelve KO is a set. Jesus, um, beast. But yeah, Jack Manson is a big step up in competition. He's he's obviously a lot more experienced than anyone. Um, that we've seen Joe fight in, in recent times. 100%. Yeah, he's fought the best of the best, that's for sure. Um, he's not always beat the best of the best. No. But he has beat some pretty good guys. Uh, he was looking like he was going to go on a bit of a title tear uh, before he faced Kananir there, and then, you know, he's gone back and win-loss, win-loss since then. Mm. But, you know. Jeez, yeah, one over Calvin Gastelum. That's Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, that's not, not something to just skip over. Heel hook as well. I remember that fight. Kelvin just gave him that heel hook. It was pretty horrible. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's definitely nothing to... Uh, one over Chris you know. Curtis is, is also quite a good one. And Big Edmund Shabirzian. 
um, first guy to beat him, I believe. Yeah, so he's he's a real he's a real competitive uh, competitive fighter, and he's got quite good skills in in all aspects of of MMA. He does. He took he took Sean Strickland to decision, and and that was a pretty close fight. That was a good yeah, fight. That was a, that was a banger. Um, he's uh yeah, great grappling, great wrestling. He's going to want to try and take this to the ground more yeah. than likely. Uh, he doesn't have the knockout power that the likes of uh Joe will have, so he he will be wanting to avoid that big power punch for sure. Um, Jack the Joker. Jack the Joker. Why is he the Joker? I wonder. Maybe he's funny. Maybe that that would make sense. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Maybe he just uh, has an <clears throat> uncontrollable laugh. Maybe, maybe his dad cut his the sides of his mouth when he was young. That's also a potential reason it. for his nickname. Yes, could could be. You never know. You never know in these. You know, this is a strange world that we live in. Um, but yeah, interesting fight. I think this is gonna. We're gonna figure out whether Joe Pfeiffer belongs uh, in the top top echelon of this division. Especially if he can go out there and get a first round finish, knockout. Um, I think that that propels him into, you know, top 10, top five fight, probably. Mm-hmm. Against the likes of maybe a Marvin Vittori, yep. a Jared Cannonier. Yep. I mean, him versus Hamza, that's, you know. That's, that could be on the cards too. There's, the middleweight division is really brewing up to be the best division for new, for younger guys. Yeah, I'd agree. Coming up. You've got Pfeiffer, um, you've got. Bo Nickel. There's a bit of a passing up. of the torch going on at the moment, isn't there? Yeah, like there's, yeah, yeah. and I think that's why we've seen the the belt be thrown around quite a bit lately. Mm. It's just because there is so much talent coming through, but yeah. also there's there is the likes of yeah Vittori, Cannonier, um, even Strickland now who's been there for quite a while. Yeah, these guys yeah. who have always been you know tossing it up in the top <clears> ten, <throat> are now having to face uh, some newer contenders Younger coming guys. through, and yeah, there's just a bit of a different skill base behind behind some of these younger guys yeah um so yeah i agree i think this is going to be a really exciting division for the next couple of years until 100%. it kind of settles itself out for a, yeah. another another wee while because i mean what izzy is coming towards the end of his career now he's 36 i think th- or maybe 35 so he's definitely coming towards the end of his career but you got strickland who's only 32 mm-hmm. you got um you've got Drickus Duplessis, if I can forget yep. the name of the champ for a moment there. This really isn't working, is it? Um, no. You got DDP, who is, I think, 31. Yes. So those guys aren't old. No. You know? And then you got like Hamza, who's 28, 29 now. Um, Bo Nickel, who's like 25. Pfeiffer, who's what? Maybe he's probably like young. <laughs> wow. I, think he's, I think he's still in his 20s. Um, yeah, 27. 27. So, you know, you've got this division that's just stacked with contenders of all ages, and it's yeah. going to be, yeah, super interesting. Uh, I think we'll see the belt change over a lot. If you're DDP, you've got to be on your toes now. Oh, you yeah. Um, <clears throat> and we'll probably see DDP fight Izzy or, or something, or we'll see what happens with Izzy. Maybe he gets the belt one more time. It maybe he doesn't. That's all got to settle out. Once that's done, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. If I was Izzy, I'd just retire. <laughs> what now? Fuck this. Yeah. I'd, or maybe come I'd, back, fight one more time. Yeah. yeah. Fight one more time and then I go off. Yeah. Because, I mean, Izzy at 36, he's done it all. Literally done fucking end everything. Mm-hmm. He's He was the guy for so long. Come back, win the belt back if you can. Walk off into the sunset. And there'd be a lot of room for, for things for him to do now. Like he's he's proven he's quite the personality. Yeah. Um, Big following. A massive following. Um, one of the biggest active stars in the UFC mm. um, up until late um, when he has kind of, you know, been addressing a few other things. But, yeah, I think there will be room for him to possibly have a, a career still with the UFC once he's not fighting. That mm. could be on the table. Um, his, like, his YouTube channel seems to be getting quite yeah. a following. And I mean, that's not an easy thing to... No, an and he's got his brother do. who helps him run that as yep. well, which is cool. Yeah, so... And then he's quite involved in uh, in the likes of Engage as well. Yeah, and he's always at local fight nights. Um, I'm sure he wants to coach at some point. You know, I'm sure he's got a lot of wisdom to pass on. It's an MRI. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, shit. Is it? Um, yeah, no, I agree. I think, yeah, there, there will be some room for him to kind of step in there yeah. with uh, Eugene and maybe help Eugene. some of these guys come through Eugene the ranks. Eugene uh, needs from- some new jeans. From City Kickboxing. 
exactly 100 percent. so no izzy's izzy's not got a shortage of uh, opportunity going forward for sure <clears throat> but what is your opinion on the outcome of this fight jack manson versus joe pfeiffer um i'd like to see joe pfeiffer get it done uh obviously we brushed over this earlier he has broken francis and garno's record he has of the hardest recorded punch he, he yeah which is interesting. It's crazy for a middleweight to be coming yeah. out with uh, yeah. stats like that. He did say on JRE that he he does walk around at about two two five. Right. So he is big, but I mean Francis walks around at what two? A three six five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like three times the size of this guy. Yeah. So super impressive. I mean stats don't lie. There's a video proof of it. Mm-hmm. Um, fucking interesting. Really interesting that he was able to break that. Oh, I don't. It, like again, it all just comes down to technique, really, doesn't it? Um, yeah. And so, yeah, if it it has kind of shown in this guy's last few fights that he can put people out, oh, absolutely, um, in pretty spectacular fashion. So, yeah, I think we will be if he lands. There's a big chance that Jack Manson is going to go to sleep or get finished. And this is five rounds as well. It is, yeah. So, I mean, we might see one of them tire out. Yeah, we could. That that would be that would be interesting. I mean, Joe Pfeiffer, like we said, hasn't been past the second round in his last five yeah. fights, I think it is. Mm. So that could play a part. But yeah, if he can get him out of there in the first couple of rounds, I, I see that as, as quite a bit more of a possibility than anything same, else. Same here. I, I'm going to go round one, yep. PKO finish. Wow. Um, if I, I mean, <clears throat> if, it, if it isn't a round one or a round two knockout by Pfeiffer, I can see Jack Manson going... Yeah, you know, getting it done, kind of settling like down and just putting his yeah. putting his game plan to use, <laughs> getting and... those last three rounds, you know. Yep. No, but I I think uh, Joe Pfeiffer will kind of it'll take a bit of feeling out. Like we said, uh, Jack Manson is a big step up in competition for him. Mm. I think we're going to see a pretty clean knockout in the round two. Yep. Cool. I'll go round one. You go round two. You both pick the same guy. Round one, round two. Uh, so sorry, Jack. We like you. You're a cool guy, but. You know, we've got to pick with our cock. Mm. And knockouts make me hard. Um, anyway, That's moving into the point. co-main. Yeah, they do, don't they? Moving into the co-main event. Danage. The undercard of uh, Joe Pfeiffer versus Danage. Uh, so, yeah, Danage versus Andre <laughs> Philly. <laughs> Andre, what could you do with his name? Andre um, Philly. Andre Philly. Andre Philly uh, versus Danage. Yeah. Dan Edge. Dan Eig. So Dan Eig versus Andre Feely. Interesting matchup. Uh, Dan Eig has some pretty serious knockout power for the featherweight division. Mm. He's knocked out guys before. He Not has often. knocked out guys. He has. Uh, woman, 17 though. and 7. 17 and 7. So these guys both quite experienced. Uh, Andre Absolutely. Philly with a 23 and 10. Yep. And won no contest. But Andre Philly a bit of a back and forth kind of guy as well. Yeah, it seems like it. Very talented. Nonetheless, um, <clears throat> same with Dan Eag, of course. Oops. Let's let's pull up there. Fucking hell! I'm trying to type here, guys, but my keyboard's not. What really have you got good. there? What have you got there? Dan Eag, let's 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 show off this wonderful human being's MMA record. Dan 50k Ige. Uh, so obviously Andre Philly up next. His last fight was against Bryce Mitchell, and he did get pretty pretty well controlled in that fight. Mm. It's pretty impressive by Mitchell. Um, he beat Landwehr by decision, and obviously KO'd Damon Jackson. Before that, he was on a three fight losing skid, three decisions, um, but against tough guys. Yeah, very very tough guys. Yeah, Ev Loev has, has proven that he's he's no joke um, in his recent match against uh, Arnold Allen. Yep. Um, Josh Emmett as well. Former interim title challenger. Yep. Has gone out there and done some pretty impressive stuff in the, the latter parts of his career, mm -hmm. um, which I think we're probably in now. But yeah, he well, wins over Edson Barboza. Mm. That's impressive. Mercer Bettick, that's a, a very good win as well. Um, so this guy has been been there. You know, he was on a a seven fight, uh, sorry, a six fight win streak at one point in his career, which is no easy feat. No, six fights in a row in the UFC, getting to Edson Barboza, and then you know, obviously losing to Calvin Cater by decision. Calvin Cater is a tough, tough matchup. Yeah, you know, and since then he's he has been a bit back and forth, but I wouldn't put it past 
I don't think he's past it, that's for sure. He's 32 years old. He's still got a lot of room to grow. Mm. Um, he's one of those guys that's been really active and has taken a lot of risks. So, yeah, therefore, yeah. his record reflects that. Exactly, exactly. And similar with similar thing goes with uh, Andre Feely, really. Another guy who's back and forth, losses, wins, losses, wins, you know, puts together a bit of a streak and then he gets gets beaten. Also having a loss against Bryce Mitchell. Yeah, exactly. Bryce Mitchell, you, you deed him. Uh and his last against fight Michael very, Johnson very too. Interesting. Michael, jo- yeah, yeah, he did, he did. Um, weird fighter. Lost to Calvin Cater as well. Obviously, Yari Rodriguez, Max Holloway back in oh, the day. Yeah, he's been, he's been there, done mixing that. it up with the best day. Eh? <clears throat> exactly. And what his first fight in the UFC was in 2013. So you know he's been here for 10 years. 33 now. Uh, he seems to be very focused. He's beaten some pretty decent guys on his way, on his way, you know. So this is going to be a very, very, very intriguing fight. Very mm-hmm. intriguing fight. Both guys with knockout power, finishing ability. Both guys coming into the latter stages of their career at 32 and 33. I like it. I like it. Mm-hmm. This could be this could be fight of the night. I mean, what, what did we say was going to be fight of the night last time? Uh, it was probably what got fight of the night. Probably, you know. No, I think it may have been... One of the go back, go back to the last one of the worst ones. Quite nice, yeah. That's a pretty pathetic. Moika, we said Moicano Dober, and it yeah. ended up being a bit of a snooze fest. It was all right. It wasn't terrible. It but... wasn't, but yeah, it was just a <clears throat> a spoon fist. It was and the last two fights were spoon fists on were, that card. They were, but I, I really, I really think that this is going to be a banger. I, I think I don't see any either of these guys trying to go for a takedown. Maybe Philly trying to Im- implement a little bit of jujitsu at some point, but I think both, this is going to be a stand up. Yeah, though. I think both guys are just going to be quite respectful in the fact that they're both quite well rounded. And mm-hmm. I think it'll go down to, yeah, it will come down to the striking yep. um, and seeing who can control things <laughs> on the feet. 100%. 100%. I, I agree. And I think that it's going to lean towards Andre Philly. He looked really good in his last fight. He got the TKO there. Uh, I think he's slightly more well-rounded than Dan Ige on the ground, especially. And I'm going to go for an Andre Feely decision. Okay. <clears throat> what are you thinking? I'm going to go for a uh, a Dan Ige third round finish. Okay. Okay. Just to Interesting. Kind of, just to, just kind to of, shake things yeah, up. Shake like, it up a little bit. Add a little bit of chicken salt on top of that. Yeah, that's exactly what I was <clears throat> trying to do. Yeah. Chicken salt. Chicken salt. That's the exact that's, thing that's what I was you're doing. Thinking, wasn't yeah. It? yeah. In my head was chicken salt and me sprinkling it all over this fight. I knew it. That I'll be predicting on Verdict MMA. <clears throat> Shout out Verdict. So there you go. There's our picks. Put money on it. Um, either one. We didn't give you a... We, we gave you two picks. So pick one. And put loads of money on it. All right. Anyway, moving on. <coughs> Robert Brazier versus <laughs> Ihor Portino. Uh yeah, again the don't unpronounceable really know who these guys duo. Are. Yeah, the unpronounceable men. Thirty-three and twenty-seven. That is their ages. Not that is not someone's record. That'd be a, <laughs> That'd pretty... be a bad record. Let's pull them up on uh, Sure Dog so we can have a wee look at sure, their bro. records. So, oh, he's on a five-fight winning streak, and it's his uh, debut. All KOs, or yeah, all knockouts at least. We've got a couple of TKOs there. Um, uh, looks like he's doing all right. Ihor, let's see what. Well, so he's on a two fight skid. He's lost three out of his four fights in the UFC. Interesting. Then this I, is a bit it, of a toss up match. It seems like they're possibly feeding Ihor to this this new fella. Yeah, yeah. But then saying that he's never had a win in a major organization. So no, you're right. Could be. He has also one. not gone past the first round in his last five fight. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. A seventeen second knockout there. Shit. Um, and only one of them making it. Yeah, past the two minute mark in in his last five. Interesting. What so, so Ihor? He's he looks like he's got a couple of submissions, a few. Not the biggest knockout artist, that's for sure. I mean, he beat Mauricio Shogun Hua, who was like 70 at the time. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I'm going to go with, who are you going to go with actually first? You you tell me your pick. Uh, not Ihor. Uh, yeah, I'll be going with Robert Bryshek for this one. Uh, fighting out of Poland. <laughs> yep. 
yeah i think yeah i think this is this is setting up his uh his ufc career quite nicely i think we'll probably see a a similar fashion finish to what he's been getting in his last few fights um round one or two i think it is like you say his first fight in a major organization so that will probably be a bit of a test for him but you can't argue with the fact this guy is on a five fight knockout streak um and yeah four of them coming within two minutes pretty impressive it's very impressive if we look at his knockouts submissions and decisions 11 knockouts one submission five decisions that's pretty it's a pretty heavy ratio um, yeah. favor for for knockouts. A, what is that? A seventy one percent finish rate. Yeah, crazy. And that is very crazy. So he's also he's he's also um, he's he looks like he's improving as well. Obviously, so he lost a couple fights and then he's just been on a tear. So mm. I, I agree. I reckon we're going to see a first round knockout from uh, Robert. First or second? I'll go with number. One. I'll go with first round. I'm going to go with first round here first as well. Round too. Yeah. Um, look at look at how good we are. We didn't even know who those guys were, and we've just given a perfect breakdown of of what's going to happen. Talent, us two. Dana, hire us. We'll be in charge of everything. All right. Anyway, moving on. Brad Travares is back after his victory against Chris the Cripple Weidman. Um, <laughs> that sorry, was Chris. a that was a sad fight to watch. It man. was. That was tough. I I really was rooting for Chris there, but oh, he didn't get it done. No. Pussy, <laughs> um, he didn't get it done because Travares he had a really good game plan. Yep, basically in that fight, and Chris just didn't look like he had it. No, in all honesty, he just didn't look like he was. And then he re-injured his fucking leg again, and now he's going to be out for however. He should just retire, basically. I think so. Uh, he was great, but you know his time is is long gone now. But Brad Travares thirty six years of age, getting fighting on. Gregory Rodriguez. He's getting on. He's getting on a bit. Let's pull up Brad's record and, and break this one down. So Brad Travarez, um, oh yeah. So his previous two fights before the Weidman fight were were losses. He lost to Drickus, unanimous decision. That's obviously not a terrible loss to have on your record. I think that was Drickus's first fight in the UFC, wasn't it? Uh, I don't think it was his first, but I think it was. Yeah, so he'd fought oh, okay twice before that. So one of his earlier ones. Mm-hmm. Um, Drickus looked average as in that fight. Yeah, he did. Crazy to think. Um, oh, it's because he hadn't had his nose operation yet. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, lost to Bruno Silva again. Not a bad loss. Bruno Silva's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, obviously coming back off that win against, he's not doing too well. Uh, coming back, he had a banging fight with fucking Pereira. Alex Pereira's second fight in the UFC against Bruno Silva. Oh, yeah. That went to decision, yeah, didn't it? It did. He, he landed some good hits as well. Hmm. Uh, back back then, I hated Pereira. I was like, I wanted him to lose so bad. Yeah. And now I'm like, I love him. He's like my favorite fighter. Sharma. <laughs> Sharma. <laughs> Brazilians. The best. Um, yeah, so Gregory Rodriguez, 14 and 5. He is 31 years of age. He's look, He's been looking pretty good. Um Powerful guy. He's got some pretty good wrestling and, and jiu-jitsu as well, though. I remember from his last fight. This isn't looking good for Brad. No, I don't think so. This but, is not looking good for Brad. Like, I mean, Brad has been tossing it up with the best of the best for a while. Um, he has. And so, I mean, this could be a, a new kind of test for, for Gregory Greg. Rodriguez. Obviously, the the experience factor is, is what's going to come into this a lot, I think. Um, and Brad's got that on his side. He does. Yep, he has, right. like I just said, he has fought some of, well, he's fought Drikus, he's fought Izzy, uh, he's fought Whitaker. Whitaker, he's fought, um, who are we just talking about? Weidman? And all four of those guys are- Former ex- champs. Yeah, or mm. the champ at the moment when, yeah, in the yeah. form of Drikus. So like, he's yeah. been, yeah, he's been in there with the best guys. And I mean, that is only going to improve your, your game. 100%. I agree. Uh, and often when guys hit like 35, 36, they have like a bit of a career resurgence mm. for a couple fights. Yeah. We could see that. We could see a really impressive decision. I don't think he'll finish him. No, I don't think so either. But yeah, coming off a, a win against um, washed out Weidman, yeah. I mean, it's still, could it's be still a win. Confident yeah. Coming off you're going to be riding a little bit of a wave. A little bit of a, a um, wank. So yeah, maybe Robocop Rodriguez is, is in for a... 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I know, I know what you're saying. And and Robocop has lost before. He doesn't look 31. He looks about 50. Yeah. He could very well be lying about his age. Honestly, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Why though? People do that. You know what he looks like? He looks like an angry dad on the sidelines of a sports event. He does. <laughs> He's drunk. God. I mean, yeah, he's, he does not look 31. If I was to pick his age, I would say about 45 to 50. Yeah. Not 50, but 45, I'd say. Fighting ages 40, people, 45. though. It does. He's still got quite a good hairline there. I know I know he's got a, a shaved head, but you can see his hairline still yeah, there. Yeah. These are the things that I notice, you see. He could have a full head of hair if he wanted. Yeah. Whereas you couldn't. That was below the Is belt. Is that what you're trying to say? So I know. I, I need a five-minute to... break after that. I had a low blow. <laughs> Oh, sorry, guys. I had to do it. Um. Anyway, what's your pick? What's your pick for this fight? I want to stick with my guy Tavares. I want to see Brad? him get a yeah. I want to see Brad. 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 <laughs> I want to see Brad Tavares get another win before he goes out and <laughs> get another <laughs> win. Yeah, buddy, Brad Tavares. Yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I, I think that the experience is going to play a big factor. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think this is going to go to decision. No. I, I think this is going to go to decision. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I. I'm going to say Brad Tavares by split decision. Split D? Split D. Okay, interesting. I'm going to go with, just to play devil's advocate, I'll go with I'll go with Robo. And I'll say round two KO. Wow. Because I just want to, you know, I, I honestly think you're, I, I'm more tempted to go with the same thing as you, but I don't want to just keep doing the same pick. Hey, so fair I'll, enough. I'll go with Robo. Round Keep it two, interesting for the KO. people Keep out there that are listening right now. Keep it interesting for our one viewer, Zach. Hey, Zach. And we know he views. He does. He does. He he's, he's a hardcore listener. Thank you, Zachary. Um, anyway, moving on. Moving on, we have... Zach. We've got Zach. <laughs> Zach fighting uh, someone. Um, ba -ba -bum. His demons. Zach is fighting his car. Michael, Michael Johnson. Johnson. Flowers. <laughs> He's fighting flowers. Flowers. Mike. Mike. Michael, I was, Mike. I was saying that. Big Mike. Big Mike the menace. I was saying this before. He's always got a an even KD. He does. You know, yeah. he's now 22 and 19, is it? Or 20? Yeah. 22, 19. 20, oh my God. Jesus Christ. Look at his record. It's fucking insane. That is, he's, but he's he's fought the best of the best again. Yeah, another crafty veteran who, on his day, can beat the best in the world. That's weird man. He's, he beat fucking Dustin Poirier. Yep, he looked really good against Khabib as well. He looked yeah, looked good against Khabib. One of Khabib. Khabib's bigger tests. Yeah, Poirier, Edson Barboza. But yeah, then Gleason like Tebow goes out Tony there. Ferguson oh back my in gosh. his prime. Shit's insane. Yeah, uh, but then he's also lost to you know Benny, Nate. Khabib, obviously. Justin, Darren Elkins, Josh Emmett, Stephen Ray, Stevie Thiago Ray Moises. Cyrus. Like, I mean, that knockout from Josh Emmett was fucked. Oh, it shouldn't be legal. Shouldn't be allowed to do that. Too much power. He does. He lost to Jamie Malarkey. So you can beat Dustin Poirier and then lose to fuck it. Beat Tony Ferguson in his prime. Lose to Jamie Malarkey, mm. who's like on the verge of getting cut. Oh, well, no. But yeah, it's yeah. he needs to show up, man. He does. That's the thing. And he's getting on a bit, but you know, Darius Flowers, unproven. Beast mode flowers. Beast mode. Flowers. <laughs> flowers. Change your name, buddy. Flowers. Yeah, it's probably yeah. I feel bad for him. Um He's had a draw. He's had a draw. Jake Matthews, not a bad loss. Jake's a, a very good fighter on his day. Mm hmm But and you know, he's coming off the, the contender series. This is probably about the level that Michael Johnson needs to stick at for his next fight, I'd say. Yep. Uh, so, oh, I'm nervous for him though. Yeah, same. Well, it's the the thing that's that's KOs. good about Michael Johnson is you just never know. What's yeah, happen. Yeah, you really don't. And yeah, if this guy's carrying eight KOs from twelve wins, then we, we could see a finish. We could see a finish. Yeah, I think we're gonna see a finish either way. Johnson's chin sure. is not what it used to be. No, no, it's not. Uh, and this guy looks pretty jacked. And you know, beast mode. That's kind of a cool name. So hours. I'm gonna go with. Michael Johnson for the upset decision victory. Yeah? No, I can't do that. That's not a good idea. 
but I think it's I think it's time to smell the flowers here. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> what are you gonna What are you gonna pick? Um, look, I'm just gonna go with my brain and and. Oh, it's, it's hard, Johnson, isn't it? though. You never know. It is. Darius Flowers. I reckon he's due a win. I think he's going to get a win. And I think it's going to be a decision victory. I'm going to stick with that. You're going to say Michael, Michael Johnson by decision? MJ by decision. Um, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to go with you, actually. MJ? I want to see Michael Johnson get it done. Same. I want to see him get maybe one or two more fights in, and then please, before you're literally 22 and 22... And you're dead. No, no, like his record. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But he's probably also going to be dead at that point. Yeah. Retire. It's oh, it's just sad, man, watching these guys who have had like banger after banger in their, like, well, over 10 years ago now kind of thing. Mm. He's 37. Yeah. He's going to be 38 this now year. Now really just struggling to kind of match up to some of these Larry youngsters coming mm. through. These puffy people. Um, anyways, so that's our, our call for that. Let us know what you think in the comments. We've got Vieira versus Petrosian. Uh, <clears throat> both have a record of nine and two. Uh, obviously Petrosian, uh, sorry, Vieira is 34. Petrosian is 33. Interesting. Sticking up pretty evenly on, uh, on paper. Yeah, on paper, both pretty even. Petrosian's on a two-fight win streak after losing to Kai Barolo. Um, but, you know, he's he's been doing pretty pretty well. He's been in the UFC for a little while now, since 2022, uh, 2021. Um, but mainly decisions in his, in his career. So mm. Vieira, the Brazilian, has been in the UFC for a bit longer, uh, but he's also been back and forth with uh, losses and wins. I think uh, interesting one. I think Vera. I like Vera. I think Vera one. by submission. Yeah, I, I've got a feeling Vera is going to win too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's going to be a. I, yeah, I think submission as well. I think you're right. Round um, two. Either him by deci- de, uh, by submission, or I think Petrosi might get a decision. But I'm going to go round three submission for Vera. Okay. Round three. Uh, Petrosian. He's got a cool name. I'll give him that. It's very cool. Should we should we skim over the prelims as well and just see what we think? Oh, I'd love to. Oh my god, this keyboard. But slow Technical is it? Technical issues, men and women. Once again, we've got one of the letters there. UFC. That's the thing that we like. Uh, so big prelim card. We'll, we'll skim over this one. We've got Trevin Giles headlining. Interesting fellow there. I'll take him for the win. Nice. Look, I'm not going to lie to you. I've never heard of any of these people. Max Griffin's on there. I know, know of him. Devin Clark. I've seen him fight before. Uh, I'm useless with names. That is my problem. Yeah, same. You just remember the the fight. Yeah. The look. I'll like be watching this this fight card and I'll be like, oh yeah, that guy. I do remember him. This is a good fight. Walter Wait, Max Griffin versus Jeremiah Wells. That'll be a that will be a good fight for sure. If you don't know, that's <laughs> if you don't know now. You, you know. don't know now. You know. Pick. Um, but I'll, I'll chuck it on the screen so people can have a peek. Uh, if you don't know, Trevor Giles is headlining. We've got Beloja uh, Oki versus Timmy Kuamba. Uh, Loma Look Boon Me versus Bruna Brazil. Cool name there. It's probably from Brazil. Is it the only woman's fight on the whole card? It is. Wow, we thank you, UFC. Um, Devin Clark versus only one Martin piss break. Chino. Only one piss break. That's gonna to be tough. Uh, How many shits do you think we have? <laughs> uh, Max Griffin versus Jeremiah Wells. Good fight there. Zach Pruger versus Bodgan Guxko. Look, <laughs> good. Look. It's a good little prelims card. Chuck yeah. it on in the background. Have fun, basically, guys. Yep. Yeah. But that finishes our breakdown of the card, the upcoming card. We've got a couple of other things we'd like to bring up. Um, That's right, we a few do. Things, a few things here and there. UFC 300 still doesn't have a main event. What the Why? fuck is going on? Should we have a little... It, what's it going to be? What is it going to be? It's, it's. I don't think it's going to be Drakus. No. Um. I don't think it's going to be Drakus, is he? No. I think there is still some... 
you know, cards on the table that it might have something to do with Izzy, but maybe. I, but main event, you've got to think it's got to be a title fight. That's right. Like, and I don't see him fighting Drakus just because of how Drakus looked after that uh, Sean Strickland loss, yeah, uh, win. Yeah. Um, Seems like he'd need more time. Yep. I, I really Fair think enough. it's going to be Pereira in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, Pereira, Espinal has been teased a lot. A lot so it has been. So that would be cool. I it mean, would be, it would be, your interim's weird, but... It would be the kind of fight that you would make for 300. Yeah. Like you wouldn't make it for any other card because it just really doesn't make sense for either <clears throat> no. of these guys to be taking a risk like that. Um, but yeah, really the, the other thing is as well, we haven't heard much out of Jamal Hill. He does look like he's lost a bit of weight. Uh, he was at the fight night last weekend and he looked in fairly decent shape, which he normally doesn't when he's out of yeah. camp. So he usually looks pretty chub. It could be Jamal Hill versus Alex Pereira. Maybe, um, maybe, but you know, yeah, maybe. The undisputed light heavyweight championship. If he's getting in shape, that's a good point. Of the world. Tom has been posting a whole lot on uh, in, on Twitter about like, you know, poking the bear and saying like 300 and like putting, you know, little things out there. I so. saw him put a story up the other day and it had the stone face in it, it and did. it had flights booked to Las Vegas yeah. for UFC 3, the, like the dates that line up. It's, it's it's a weird one, man. I'm sure Tom would take that. I'm sure yeah. Piero would take that. And that yeah. would be a fucking interesting matchup. You know, you've got Tom, who's this up-and-coming heavyweight guy who seems pretty unbeatable. Yep. Then you've got Pereira, who's just got iron fists. Who is, I would say, one of the best strikers we've ever seen in the UFC. Absolutely. And um, But he's much smaller than Tom. Tom's mm-hmm. a big, big, big heavyweight. Pereira's never fought at heavyweight in his MMA career. Probably, but that's exciting. Has he fought at heavyweight in his kickboxing career? I don't I, think, I wouldn't think so. so. No. Doubt it. He's so he'd probably be big. walking in there somewhere around 240. Yeah, he'd be like a Wilder, Deontay Wilder heavyweight, you know? Yeah, he wouldn't be cutting. He'd be no. literally putting on weight for this fight. Yeah, 130, um, 140 would probably be. 230? Uh, yeah, 230, 240. Yeah, I don't see him going in there at a <laughs> flyweight. Look, I wouldn't put it past him to cut that amount yeah, of weight. Honestly, he's, he's a crazy man. He's done it before. He's a nutter. <laughs> he's a nutter. Um, but yeah, maybe that, maybe, I mean, is he, maybe he's been, he has been talking about it a little bit, mm-hmm. putting some teasers out there. I have no idea. There's been, there was something online about oh, the Super Bowl halftime show. They're going to announce Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. And it's like, I mean, oh. may, maybe, but like, I doubt it. I really doubt that two months away. Conor looks okay. He's training. Yeah. But like. You know, Dana's saying hopefully by the end of the year. Con- and he's been saying that for the last two years. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a tricky one. I, I just want them to announce it, get it over with, disappoint us. It's it's not far away now. Yeah, and I, look, I feel like something has had to have gone seriously wrong for them not to have announced it by now. Yeah. Every other yeah. fight pretty much is there. It's signed. Yeah. It's ready to go. Well, apparently just not the all of event. them are signed, but they have been announced. Um, Just the main event that we're waiting on. I mean... Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be announced soon. It's got to be announced soon. It's got to be. We've got two months now. Like, we should have had the main event a month ago. Yeah. Like, ideally, we should have had the main event a month ago. Whoever, um, yeah, whoever is going to be on this main event, had to be they, training. Th- yeah, that's right. And it, it's not giving them much time. Um, no. like, I mean, they probably know. Yeah, they probably already know that there's a chance of it happening, but could be Bilal. Bilal versus. <laughs> Sean Brady. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, I mean, it's just a waiting game, isn't it? It's just a fucking waiting game. And we just got to, we're just sat here like schmucks. We just keep getting told that it's going to be this week. Yeah. Why does he keep saying that? Because he's, he likes playing with Grr. people. And then, and then you get excited because he's, he's sitting there in front of it. What's up guys? And, and yeah. then it's just power a power back. slap fucking announcement. Like, Fuck you, you big pink oiled up. Power machine. slap him. Yeah. Give him a wank. Uh, maybe not. Anyway, moving on. We've got John Jones tackling some kid. I didn't see that. It was so he's in Australia at the moment, just having oh, a yeah. cross. Yeah. And um, He's doing a bit of a ticky tour, actually. He is. I saw he's gonna be in Thailand soon as well. Yeah. So his rehab, obviously doing <laughs> something. His rehab in multiple ways. Let's I'll try and find that video on on Twitter. While you're doing that, I played UFC 5 for the first time last night. Oh, with Squill? Yep. Was it good? No. Was it really shit? I think it seemed, it felt pretty janky. 
I've heard that it's worse than four and even three and two. The the grappling aspect of it seems to have been improved. That's great. But at the same time, the striking is just so confusing. Like they changed a whole lot of shit around from the last game. Um and yeah, it just it doesn't feel the same. And like you press so like I sound like such a fucking nerd right now, but you press some buttons or do one thing. And you press the exact same buttons the next time, it'll do another Something thing. Else. It's very confusing. Weird. But yeah. it just doesn't feel polished mm, like any janky. EA game ever. Mm. Um, I don't know why I'm sounding surprised by this, but... Yeah, what's going on? There was a lot of hype behind it. But the, the, mm. the reason that it reminded me is that in UFC 4, when John Jones went to heavyweight, they just kind of moved his avatar into the heavyweight division, and he still looked like slim John Jones from lightweight. But now there's a fat John Jones and a oh. skinny John Jones, so that I, I enjoyed that. Is it actually called Fat Jones? No, no, he's just Jones, Jones, uh, well, heavyweight Jones or something. It's just yeah, he's in the heavyweight division and he looks like a heavyweight now. So that's that was funny. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, he does look weird now as a, as a as a heavyweight. I can't find that video by the way. Uh, I can just find this bullshit. But <clears throat> yeah, he tackled some kid, so he looks fine. His shit is peck. Okay. You know, it's supposed to be torn. And he was tackling a, an Australian rugby guy or something. Nice. So, you That's know. That's what you want to be doing, isn't it? Yeah. Great. But it just, you know, maybe he's going to be ready soon. Who knows? You know, 205 maybe? 305? Yeah. That kind of number, maybe? I think we'll probably possible. see him fighting towards November. November, yeah. October, November time. Later in the year. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm very excited for that. It's going to be great. On the tackling fans note, did you see uh, Strickland taking that guy down in the snow? No, I didn't see that. Um, so, yeah, apparently some dude was challenging him to to wrestle the whole day because he's been snowboarding quite a lot recently, it looks like. And, uh, yeah, there's this video on Strickland's Instagram of him wrestling this kid. Just a kid. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, probably like, he's probably like our age, oh, like okay. a guy in his early 20s, I'd say. Um, Mid-20s. But, yeah, it was, it was quite it was quite funny. Anyway, anyway, we've got Ian the chair, Gary, training got with the chair in the corner. Yeah. yeah, training with Olives, Charles, Charlie boy, Charlie Olives. Interesting, interesting stuff. Obviously, he's at um at their gym. He still he's hasn't turned with. his comments on yet. I know. Oh God, <laughs> you see that post about Rampage Jackson, the idiot. He was supposed to have me on his podcast. Did you see that? No. Apparently Rampage was supposed to have him on his podcast, like in like three days' time. Yeah. Rampage went on Ariel three days before and said, oh, Ian, you know, he's such a cuck. He wouldn't come on my podcast because he was afraid of getting made fun of, blah, blah, like ripping the shit out of him. And then Ian put a story up like, Rampage, this idiot, went on uh, Ariel's show. I'm booked for his podcast in three days. I'm going on in three days. And he's just gone on and called me a cuck. And like ripped me out the whole time. And he's like, there's no way I'm going on that podcast now. And Rampage yeah, I'm just, sure that's how it played out. Yeah. I mean, Rampage probably, uh, who knows? Who knows what the fuck? Oh. But like, yeah, it's just funny. Rampage just <laughs> ripping him out on Ariel's show. And he was like calling him an idiot and saying this and that. And it's like, well, he'd probably still fuck you up. Yeah, I'd say yeah. so. Ian, um, just, yeah. what are you Ian, just doing, move on. man? Divorce that woman now. No. <laughs> Now. Get ready of adopt out your child, so you don't have any trace left of her. Um, Sock, yeah, and get rid of the chair, mate. Is it his child? Is it Ian's? It kid? is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like That's... a weird looking kid. Right. Yeah. Um, That's interesting take. It is. It is. Anyway, we've got we've got a drink to review. I think we should probably do that. Yeah. Aripa. 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 Look, it tastes not great. Yeah, it's not the best. Um, it definitely has it made average. me feel smarter? No. doesn't have many sugars in it or carbs, which is, you know. Do I feel calmer and clearer? No. 32 calories. I f- maybe this feel a little bit better. Stuff I can't has, notice it that much. I have seen some news articles about this in the last six months about it being a placebo. Right. Yeah. Mm, interesting. And it's just talking shit. I mean, the L-theanine is going to do some stuff, sure, but is it going to be noticeable? Probably not. 
I'd uh, say this is one of the worst tasting drinks we've had on this. On I don't this think show. It, it's definitely not the worst because that's going to take a lot of beating. I said one of <laughs> the worst. Look, Wang Lao was the are best. We, are, we, are we going purely off taste or potential benefits to your mind? This hasn't well? benefited my mind. Well, I, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Yeah, but you feel pretty good as a baseline. Yeah, but I don't. As a baseline, <laughs> I normally feel pretty shit, and you always talk to me about that. And I don't think this has brought me up. Well, I think it's brought me up slightly, at least slightly. Not maybe it is placebo. You had a coffee, could be, could be just before you had this. Yeah, but I was already up on that. I was hard as fuck with from that coffee. This made me hard as fuck. It gave me a semi, chub. <clears throat> it gave you know when you when it starts to like you know just go like this. Yeah, when That's it's like it lifting a little oh, bit. That was it. You know, like pulsing. Yeah, slightly. It was just going like. Right. Can you see that, guys? <laughs> so, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I want to put it above prime line. Yep. I could also be convinced to go below. On taste, it's definitely below prime line. Prime line was the best prime I've tasted. I think. Still not very good. No. Prime is shit. Don't get it. It's with rip off. I want to put it below prime line. Do you want to put it below? Okay. Yep. All right. We'll put it below. Good. Good. A Reaper. I mean, I, I suppose one thing that they've got going for them, it's very low sugar. Most of the other things we've reviewed are, it's very high in sugar. Pull it up. See, see if this news article thing that I'm saying is true. Is a Reaper just a placebo effect? <laughs> <laughs> a Reaper scam. Lacks um, advertised benefits. Interesting. The company makes a wide range of health claims for its products. Some of these claims attributed to enzogenol, pine bark extract, and L-theanine are unsubstantiated. Uh, in addition, some claimed benefits are attributed to the product's vitamin C content. Let's look at this Reddit post. Yeah, but it seems like a lot of people are basically saying this is it is a scam. Yep. It's too expensive for it to be worth it in any case. That's right. Like you can just get some like a very low caffeine tea and you're going to get more benefits than you're going to get from this, from the L-theanine in the tea. I've got a new name for it. <coughs> a ripoff. Placipa. Placipa. <laughs> so, you know what? I think that, I think it's, it's rightly placed. I think you're right. I think Especially I am. Especially after reading this shit. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Placipa. Someone else said that on the Reddit post. Yeah, that's where I read it from. Oh. I'm just giving them some... When was that? Three years ago. Interested. Inter interested? Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, so give it, a, give it a go for yourself. Let us know what you think of a rip-off. Yeah. Um, Do you feel smarter? You feel good? Because I feel, feel like good? a fucking idiot for paying $7 <laughs> seven for seven shit. Uh, six. Sorry. Down from seven fifty actually. So Goodness $7 gracious. $7.50. This is a rip-off. Like, guys, what are you doing selling this shit for seven? Think, ugh, figure it out. So this should be like three dollars. It comes in a glass bottle, though. We'll mention that because that yeah, would, the glass uh, bottles reusable. That would up the price somewhat. Mm, but I don't know. It seems really stupid. It's yeah. Will sells this in a shop. Does he? No, he does. Cut it out. Cut it out, Will. Right, guys. Uh, this has been Combat Corner. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you haven't. I hope you, you hated it. Terrible. And day. if you have hated it, just Don't let us know this. in the comments below. Okay. Don't listen to this. And we'll respond to you. Cunt. Look, guys, have a wonderful day. Have an amazing Saturday. I hope you struggle to get out of bed. Have an amazing Sunday. I wonder if any of our fans are jacking it right now. While listening to us. Yeah. Definitely not. I hope not. That'd be weird. Anyway, guys. <laughs> what a strange thing to say. We'll catch you later. Maybe. We'll catch you next time on Tuesday. Don't miss out. Uh, subscribe, comment, love you guys. See you in uh, in the next one. Peace in the streets. <laughs>